So we get the same question in a different form again and again and again. And the question goes something like this. I don't want to have sex. I don't have sexual desire. How do I create sexual desire? How do I get horny? Then there's another one. I want to have multiple orgasms and I want to have multiple orgasms with my partners. How can I have a satisfying sex life? Masturbate. Tell them. Masturbate. Now that seems counterintuitive. How do I have satisfying partner sex if I'm you masturbating? Have to, you have to generate your own sexual energy. It's in you. It's here. It's not out there. I so you're saying sexual desire is within? Is within. Yep. It's inside. It isn't out there. It, it is not it's out not there. It's not in another person? <laughs> well, you can meet someone that turns you on, but that, phew, that's a flash in the yeah. pan. <laughs> that's why people get married and divorced like 10 times. <laughs> it's like That kind of thing, yes, yeah. Or multiple partners, and you're like, oh, I just can't find anyone to settle down with because you're, you're going for that lust pop. Yeah, which... I get from watching the pigeons. <laughs> we were all, that's another thing we were talking about. The kinds of things that turn you on when you get outside of that one beauty ideal of men or women, it's amazing what gets you hot. I sit at that back window and sometimes smoke a cigarette and look down and right there's a ledge right there on the building next to mine. It's No, it's a building away so it's just the perfect distance for observation so I am observing pigeon sex I'm an anthropologist which you said is very similar to human sex <laughs> <laughs> very much like the way we behave I find it very amusing very amusing and stimulating and well of course it's sex I mean <laughs> I, I'm sure that the anthropologists that watch animals have sex get turned on how could you? Well, and because it's so simple. There's no agenda, right? There's no, and even, there's even no foreplay. It's just right to it. That's kind of exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, you know, have to wade through all of the, ritual. oh, I don't feel horny. Well, no, this is not true. The, the, the pigeons have a ritual. Yes, and there, <laughs> there are uh, animals that have very elaborate yeah. meat. Yeah. And it's the whole the turn on, right? The peacocks and yeah. the birds that fluff the feathers, and yeah. there's a there's a layup to it all. Yeah, and I as I watch the pigeons, I'm thinking, well, it's very much like how we do it. And then after they, after after they copulate, the boy the, the, the boy gets the male pigeon gets on top and goes, and the feather and then jumps off and walks away, and she goes right after him. After playing coy in the beginning and hard right. to get. Right, hard to get. <laughs> and afterwards, she's right behind him. And I'm thinking, girl, walk the other way. <laughs> 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 Go get another pigeon. But, you know, we have this notion that we're just going to feel horny. But, it, uh, you know, to create sexual desire, you have to arouse yourself. And that's what masturbation really is yeah. about. Yeah. And yeah. connecting to yourself, knowing yourself. If you're having regular orgasms, you're going to be able to have great sex with whoever you sleep with. You know, whoever you have sex with. Yeah, yeah, true. Well, um, lately I've been having a lot of sex with myself, and I'm great. <laughs> I'm the best fuck I know. <laughs> oh, it is heaven. I know exactly what I want and when I want it and how I want it. And I give it to. And afterwards, oh, I stretch out on the bed, doze on. Oh, I love the like after orgasms oh. kind of moment where it's like everything's peaceful and you just lie there and you're a little sweaty and a little sticky. <laughs> and you're just like, ha. Oh. Then you like turn off your vibrator and put it down and you take out your dildo and put it down. And then you kind of drift off into light, the afterglow. light very light smooth. Oh, it's the best. <laughs> I, it re, it re, and here's, here's what's, it's free, it doesn't cost anything, there's no danger involved, there's no mm -hmm. elaborate ritual in front of no. it, or no elaborate ritual afterwards. It's simply, I get out my equipment, I lie down on my bed, 
and I have at myself. And it's all about you. And I think even when we have orgasms with a partner, at the end of the day, it is about us. Like our orgasm is about us. And I feel like that's why women, we have such a hard time with it. And we, we are pre-orgasmic for so long because we're told culturally, it's not about us, that we're, we're to please. So if you get out of that posture of pleasing others and looking to partners and you look at pleasing yourself, that's where I came from. And you always say self full. Yes. Yeah. I mean, so many people are made to feel guilty because they're interested in pleasing themselves. No. Oh. If you don't please yourself, no one will. Yeah. I always had friends growing up that would be like, why can't you be faithful to your boyfriend? Or why do you, not, you know, just have one boyfriend or just pair off. Everyone wants you to pair off. And I was like, I don't, I don't want to. I want another one. I want to figure out who I am. Oh, you I know, curiosity. Yeah. And pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. And, you know, there's no race. Being challenged. Going somewhere and being scared to death. Oh, there's it's nothing. so liberating. I <laughs> Can I really do this? Can I? Uh, I don't think I. Oh, I'm. Oh, oh, I'm doing it. Oh. And then, like, will I be guilty after? And will I feel shameful? And then, when you don't, you're like, oh my God, wait a second. <laughs> Where's the guilt? <laughs> my whole life could be like this, you know? <laughs> yeah, I guess we're talking about liberation. Mm. Li liberate yourself. So, even after 50 years, you're still talking about liberating masturbation. <laughs> the title of your first self-published book the feminist classic yep and uh, at the end of the when was it at the end of the 60s I started that and then it became sex for one she you got a real deal and then you sat back and wrote but people love that book if you can find a copy on eBay I think we're gonna re-release it as an ebook and a little print book that's next on the list to do but it's just oh yeah it's a sweet book and women love it and I it was my first book that I wrote and so much of it, it was written by Hand, by and she had hand. her vulva sketches that she drew. No, it's, it's really a... Hand job. <laughs> it's a hand job, but it's also like a, a, a love note to yourself and to other women to inspire them. I think mm -hmm. that's why it's so beautiful. I remember at the time I was so insecure about my ability to write, and I'd had so much help from Grant, and we'd had a big fight, and I left him in New York and went to San Francisco, and that's where... That's where liberating masturbation was born. And I thought, oh, can I do this? Can I do this? And I did. I did it. And I had a couple of friends, you know, read the manuscript. Well, this is great. You're, you're, you're a good writer. And I'm a writer. I'm not a writer. I'm an artist. I draw pictures. I don't write. And lo and behold, <laughs> it was a classic. It really, well, yeah. We shouldn't limit ourselves. We shouldn't limit our orgasms. Wow. I love looking back now, now that I'm so old. Looking back over those moments of, it's, we will all be challenged at one point or another. And it's how you handle that. <coughs> and I would go, Arr! and grab it, and just, Arr! and wrestle it to the ground and do it. and. Now I know that if you're not scared out of your wits about 80% of the time, <laughs> then you're not, you're not challenging yourself. You're not living. No. Live it. Live it up. Do things that challenge you. Take a deep breath and do it anyway. Do it. And it's just like, just do it. I and love it. It works. So 